Hey guys, I'm Frozen OJ, and welcome to Let's Play The Sims 3 Adam and Eve Part 1. Um, I'm really excited for this challenge. I've been thinking about doing it for about a year, and I'm finally starting it. So, um, originally I was going to do it on a blog with screenshots, but I like the idea of Let's Play better because I actually keep up with them better. I'm not that great at doing blogs. Um, in fact, anybody who's been following Mischief Managed knows that because I haven't done that in a while. But I'm pretty good about doing my Let's Plays, except for the ones that I lost the saves from. So I thought this would be better. Now this isn't just the normal Adam and Eve challenge. I'm just calling it that because to name it what it really would be, the title would be super long, and I didn't want that. But it's going to be a combination of the Adam and Eve challenge, the 100 Baby challenge, and then um, they're going to be polygamists also, um, just for fun, you know. I've never done a polygamous family before, and um, it's going to be sort of a religious cult kind of a thing. Um, so that's whether you're polygamous. Adam basically has been commanded by the Watcher, which is me, of course, to start a town. Um, and he's been given the land of Sunset Valley 2, which um, I got from the exchange is an empty world. He's also been commanded to have 100 babies in order to um, populate the town. Um, and to help him do that, he's going to have multiple wives, up to three at a time. Oh, sorry, my phone isn't on silent. I forgot to put it on silent. So, um, I'm going to be going into my additional rules a little bit later, but that's the gist of it. And Adam is going to be kind of immortal. Um, I'm giving him this age freeze potion, so all the babies will be direct descendants of him. Um, they will be his kids, not his grandkids or great can great grandkids, like you would normally do in a hundred baby challenge with generations. They're all going to be his kids. But for the Adam and Eve challenge, um, that's sort of the main challenge. I'm disregarding a lot of the 100 baby challenge rules. So that's why I'm calling it the Adam and Eve challenge. Um, and I'll tell you the rules of those, at least the ones that apply to this challenge. So first off, you start a game save that is only for this challenge, so no rotational play or anything. Begin with two sims, a male and a female, that are young adults. Got Adam here and Eve. Um, after the first two sims are created, no other sims may be created for that family. You need a completely empty world. Um, lots can be laid out if you want, but none of them may be built at all. So I'm in Sunset Valley 2, which is an empty world. Um, Adam and Eve can start with 250,000 simoleons, which I've already given them here. Um, how you obtain... wait, I was doing the wrong thing. Um, no other money are to be added for the length of the challenge. The reason that I say start with a small fortune is because that is what is to trickle down your generations. No family ever started a town with no money, which is probably true. Um, aging should be set to normal and story progression should be on. I do have the story progression mod, so it's not EA story progression, but this one is better, I think. No cheating, especially by doing anything that helps with scaling and money. That's kind of the whole point of the thing. Um, mods and objects that make your game run better are okay, but ones that make actually playing the game easier are not. Fixing bugs is never considered cheating. Do what you have to do in order to save your game. All mods that actually make it harder are always allowed. So, um, I'm going to be using a lot of objects that come from the Sims 3 store that are premium, co premium content items. I'm not considering that as cheating since it's made by the Sims people um, for the game. Anything made by EA and the Sims team, I'm calling okay for this challenge. Um, let's see here. You may not abuse lots that you don't have to buy, such as visitors allowed and no visitors allowed, um, by putting fancy skilling objects or mood boosting objects there so that your sims don't have to buy them at home. Um, 
I'm not really going to worry about that because I'm going to be using my Community Lots Compendium, which is a website that has a list of all the EA created lots um, from all the different Sims worlds that you can buy from expansions or on the store. Um, it basically has like all the schools in a list, all the police stations in a list, all the grocery stores in a list, and then you can compare them. You can see how much they cost. You can see how big um, the lot is that they're on. So I'm going to be using that to pick which lot. So I'm not going to be building my own. I'm just going to be using those. Occasionally I might use one from the exchange or something, especially like houses. But the community lots are basically going to be EA made. It's always acceptable to use mods or cheats whose effect is purely cosmetic, i.e. they make something look different but don't actually affect anything. Um, so you can use fancy cheat codes to make anything you want look nice. You can also use by debug to place things you need, um, including spawners, but don't abuse it by making a lot full of rare spawners just to make finding the good stuff easy. Um, each sim may only earn one community lot for you, so if your sim has max cooking and has 61,500 simoleons, then you may not get both the diner and the bistro. You need a second sim to max cooking to get both. And it must be the same sim. If you have one sim max handiness and another max athletics, you have not earned a military base. Um, lots that don't require skills must be earned by a specific sim. You may not change your mind about which sim did it. Your sim may not sell any of lots that they purchase. Uh, you, for any viable venue, you may only edit it through the real estate system unless you're fixing a bug. So you can't go into Edit Town and, um, you know, add stuff to that venue, um, but with free money, basically. You may freely kick out non-heirs, provided that you're moving them to a lot that is fully furnished. Fully furnished means that they've got at least a functional kitchen, bathroom, and enough beds for all the Sims living in all and for all Sims living in it, and enclosed by walls with flooring and wall coverings. You know, an actual house it doesn't have to be a spectacular one. But if every residence in your city is terrible, then your city is terrible. Um, the only way to fail this challenge is if all sims you could possibly control in the city die. For me, that's if Adam dies. Because he's the one that's fathering all the children. So if Adam dies, I'm basically screwed. If you have world adventures, any sim who goes on vacation are disqualified from earning any community lots. Not really sure why that's a rule, but okay. Sims who have earned a community lot for you suffer no penalties. If you have ambitions, the rules for professions are as follows. Firefighters are allowed when you have a fire station. Investigators are allowed when you have a police station. Ghost hunters are allowed when you have a science lab. Scientists are allowed when you have a salon. Architectural designers are allowed when you have a city hall. If you have generations, boarding schools are fully allowed. The inheritance reward is not okay. Daycares are allowed if you have a city hall. All things pets are allowed. If you have showtime, the dusty old lamp is not allowed. Uh, or you may not wish for money, at least. A stage may be added to any normally earned big park. Stages may be included in any other lot, but the sim earning the lot must be a level 10 performer in addition to the other requirements. Acrobat, magician, and singer are allowed when you have a big park with a stage. If you have Supernatural, your starting sim must start as a human. Um, if a family member is turned to a vampire, that sim is considered dead. Same for a ghost. Uh, you can set the moon to do whatever you want as long as you set it and leave it there. I have mine at the default. If you have seasons, you can set up weather however you want as long as you set it up and leave it there. I think I still have to set up my seasons. I don't think I did that yet. If you have university life, roommates are allowed, but at minimum they must be signed their own bed. If you lock them out of part of the house, they must be granted a similar space of their own. For example, if you lock them out of your private bathroom, they must be provided with a private bathroom of their own. If you have Island Paradise, ports do not have to be earned, but shouldn't contain anything beyond the port itself, mooring places, bike racks, parking spaces, and minor decor and landscaping. Houseboats have the same rules as regular houses. Lifeguards are allowed when you have a city hall and at least one beach. Okay, the residential lot rules, um, 
<clears throat> I'm going to be disregarding, basically, um, for moving Sims in or out. Sims may only move into a household using a social interaction, and not by using Edit Town or a mod, unless you're experiencing a bug or something like that. Um, if you're, if the sim you're moving in is an NPC, she he may only be married into the household. So you can't just move people in for fun. They have to be moved in with the purpose of marrying them. Sims may only moved out of the household using the phone or the computer, and not by the be by using edit town mode unless you have a mod that eliminates getting extra money from the process. Um, okay, so that's basically the rules for the Adam and Eve challenge. Now, when you're earning community lots, basically what they do is each community lot type has a rule. And I'm not going to read all of them. I'm just going to give an example. Um, the criminal warehouse, for example, you earn that when you've maxed athletics and logic and you have 50,000 simoleons in order to buy the lot with. So, um, and each lot type has a rule like that. The first one I'm going to be doing um, for Adam is a grocery store and diner. Let's see if I can find the rule for the grocery, grocery store and diner. Okay, so that's a supernatural rabbit hole that came with supernatural. Um, so for that one, you have to have max cooking and max gardening, and then 40,000 simoleons to buy it with. Um, and then for Eve, the one I'm going to be doing is the school, and for that one, you have to have maxed charisma and max logic, and there's no money requirement. So those are the rules. For the Adam and Eve challenge, the 100 baby challenge, I'm not really going to be doing the rules for that one. Basically, I'm just going to be having 100 babies and I'm keeping the aging rules. So toddlers may be aged up when they have learned to walk, talk, eat the potty, and children and teens may be aged up after they get on the honor roll. Um, for residences, which I skipped over the residence rules for the Adam and Eve challenge, I'm changing those a little bit. I'm going to make it so you're allowed to build one residence per community lot, plus additional residences for young adult children. So each time I build a community lot, I can build one residence. And also when Adam's kids um, become young adults, I can build a house for them. Some residents may be filled um, by you. Uh, go ahead and use free real estate. So. I'm going to be doing probably three seed families. Um, so one of them is going to be my sim self and her husband, which is my husband's sim self. And um, I'm going to use free real estate to get them a nicer house because people aren't going to be moving to this new town with no money the same way people who are starting a town aren't going to move there with no money. So that's why I made it okay to use free real estate. Um, normally, Sims are only allowed to earn one community lot, but Adam, since he's going to be there the whole time, I made it so he can earn one community lot per wife. Um, I'm making it so that way when he gets a new wife, it's like the start of a new generation. So he gets an, a new lot just like his heir would get a lot. Uh, wives may be married into the family after the youngest wife becomes an adult, up to three wives at a time. So that way there's not too many wives taking up space because I need that space for the children. And I'm not getting wives too quickly. Uh, this should allow for, um, except for at the beginning, two wives that are of childbearing age at the same time, with the third wife being an elder. At least that's the way I think it's going to work out. I haven't really tested it to find out, but um, that's my thought process anyway. The goal is for him to have 100 babies. Adam must risk a with one wife of childbearing age each night. 
I have risky set at 8% or I will have risky set at 8% once they buy a computer. I tried it out at 10%, which is the default. And um, Eve got pregnant with twins on the first night. And then on like the fourth night or whenever, when they wooed the second time after she had the twins, she got pregnant again. So within the first 10 days, I expected to have one child and instead I had three kids. So I'm going to change it to eight and see how that it goes. Um, I do reserve the right to change the risky chance if I'm having too many kids or too few kids. I don't think it's going to be a problem, but I'm just going to keep that as an option for myself. If more than one wife is of childbearing age, then he must alternate which wife he woos with. So it might be Eve's turn, and then the second wife's turn, and then the third wife's turn, and then back to Eve. Um, children that have reached young adult may not get a full-time job while still in the house. So that's basically th my additional rules or changed rules. Um, like I said, I'm also doing sort of a polygamous cult thing. So I have some guidelines for that. First off, uh, everybody needs to wear modest clothing. You see here Eve's got um, sleeves. She's not really showing any cleavage. And her dress is about knee length. That's basically the rule. Um, the rules for modest clothing. That she has to have some kind of sleeves, not too much cleavage, and um, around knee length. And no midriff. Um, for boys, it's a little easier. Again, sleeves, they don't really have cleavage to worry about. And, you know, pants that are of a decent length. And, you know, not, no shirtlessness, that kind of thing. Um, I'm going to be doing rolling traits. I'm not going to be picking traits for the children. So there's a chance that they'll age up with a negative trait, such as mean or rebellious. And if that happens, I'm going to send them to re-education camp, uh, which is basically boarding school for that age. Um, and when they age up, like if they're a child and they get mean, then they'll go while they're a child, but I don't necessarily have to send them while they're a teen as well. Boys will be getting kicked out on the day of their young adult birthday. It doesn't have to be immediately after they age up, but on that same day. Girls, on the other hand, will move out either when they're married or when a younger young adult brother or when a younger brother comes a young adult and they can move out with that brother. So the brother will act as a chaperone for the girl who's unmarried. Um, I think that's it for the rules. If you have an idea for the um, cult aspect for a rule for that, Please uh, leave it in the comments and I will consider adding it. I did consider doing like no technology, but Adam will need the TV to learn cooking and we will need a computer for some other things um, like learning how to write if we ever want a bookstore um, for setting settings for the mods um, for owning real estate, that kind of thing. So that's why I'm not going to do a no electronics thing like some um, more fundamentalist families do. So I think that's for the rules. Um, now, let's see here. I can go in and options. Um, I'm going to be doing five days for fall, winter, and spring. And then I don't remember how many days it is for summer until we get back up to 28. So I guess 13 days for summer because he is a gardener and I want to make summer a little bit longer. Now I want to go in and buy them a multi-tab each. Multi-tab. Um, at first, I'm going to be using the multi-tab to teach them charisma, their first charisma skill. Um, I'm not going to be using it for any other skills that they are using to get community locks with. 
I am, oh, sorry. I am going to be using the multi-tab a lot at first to teach them social networking. But they're not going to be getting um, lots with the social networking skill. So I think that's okay. I am going to be sending them to university because um, they need to make friends. No, you can't talk to Adam. You have to sit there for two hours here. Go over here. Adam, why don't you... No, don't, don't do anything. No, darn it. I gotta set his tab cast back up again because he picked out the, he picked up the multi-tab. And I'll just go over here. I'm just going to move them around so that way they're not doing anything else. Here, I'll zoom out so that's easier. Oh, and this is their house that they're going to be moving into. That's their church. I didn't mean to show you that, but I did. And where is the... There is the mascot for them to go to university. And he picked up his phone. Oh, Adam, you're killing me. Charisma. All right, you learned charisma. So Eve. See, and Adam has eleven minutes left. So he should be doing it. Okay. Um. I know that they're not going to get any money from the aptitude test. Thank you, Adam. But I'm going to have them take the aptitude test because then they um, get an opportunity to go to university and then gives a hundred dollars. So that's why I'm having them take the aptitude test, even though they're not going to get anything from it. I am sending them to university because they need to make friends. There's no way for them to make friends in this town and they need friends for their charisma. Um, for charisma to get maxed, you need 10 friends and 25 relationships. And that would take forever to do in this town. There's no rule in that amenity challenge saying you can't go to university. So, see this is the opportunity I was telling about and the reward is 100 simoleons. Okay, we can sell that. What's she gonna do? She's gonna chat with the mascot while Adam is finishing his. Okay. Well, now you can enroll in university. Alright, both of them are going. Eve is going to do fine arts since she is going to um, be painting as her way to make money after she learns her charisma and um, logic. Adam is going to do science and medicine. Right? Science and medicine, that's what I was planning on doing. That's the one with gardening, right? Let me just make sure. Yes, science and medicine. I'm going to be doing two terms because I'm not sure they can get all their friendships in one term, but I'm only going to be doing 12 credit hours because I'm not actually interested in them 
getting a degree. I just want them to go to make friends. Um, yes. Okay. Oh. Um, oh, they see they got the hundred dollars. I didn't introduce you to my Sims. I completely forgot. So Eve, she is family oriented, charismatic. Nurturing, artistic, and friendly. Her favorites are Geek Rock, Frog Legs, and Red, which I just left as the default. Same with Sagittarius being her sign. I didn't worry about that. Her lifetime wish is to be super popular and to have 20 friends. Adam, on the other hand, loves the outdoors. He's a gardener or a gatherer, green thumb, charismatic, and friendly. His favorite color is spice brown. He loves spaghetti and digi, digi tunes and he is a libra his lifetime wish is actually i wanted to change that from the perfect garden to surrounded by family um because um i had a problem with the perfect garden not working last time i did that so i'm just going to go ahead and change it to surrounded by family because last time i did the perfect garden it never worked they had all um perfect plants and it just never clicked so let's see here surrounded by family okay Yeah, those are my Sims. Um, and now they're going to be going off to university, but I am going to be ending this part as they go off to university. Um, I've already been recording for a while anyway. But if you're interested in seeing them get to university, I will actually be uploading that part today after this one. So by the time you finish watching this part, the part where they get to university should be already uploaded. So you can go ahead and watch that. Um, well, thank you guys for watching. Thank you also for your likes, your comments, and your subscriptions. It really means a lot to me. And um, I will see you next time. Bye!